Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to S Arena. Happy Thursday. Jimmy and Truitt here. Oh, snap. New resources on here. Chris Fields is here. Holla. Flip that around. Wow, look at all these people joining. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Ask Sarina Live. I am Janine Truitt, for those of you that don't know. Hey, Lataria, how are you? I'm Janine Truitt. I'm the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC based in New York. Hey, girl, culture hustler, hey. And this is my weekly show that I do at 11 p.m. every Thursday where I just basically, hey, I basically tackle a different topic um, just to give you some background. If you don't know much about me, I am an ex HR practitioner, now gone entrepreneur. My company is a talent management firm that focuses on talent management strategies for small to mid sized businesses. So I basically created this platform to kind of get away from that just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Um, thanks, Lataria, for sharing that with your followers. So um, I may talk about HR some weeks, some weeks I may not. It may just be pop news because you know what? I need to let my hair down just a little bit. So that's a little bit about me. Um, just some housekeeping things. Hearts, I love, I love, I love. And thank you to whomever is giving me all of those hearts. I appreciate it. Sharing this with your followers means the world to me because that means more people can hear more of what I have to say and I appreciate it so let's hop into it and I'm on a high today like why am I on a high because you know when you have that playlist that is like the bomb and I just kind of threw on one of my playlists before and it just like had everything just old school jams new school jams and I was just in here doing my diddy bop so <laughs> i'm hyped tonight guys you'll have to excuse me so tonight's topic is the myth of hustling and i wanted to tackle it because i'm just seeing so much all over the place on social media about hustle hard are you still awake if you're not still awake you're a failure like just so much um messaging for entrepreneurs and prefer professionals as well around what success looks like as a professional or as a business owner and it's this messaging of you've got to hustle all the time you got to be awake all the time um you know you just got to be on all the time and that somehow is some semblance of success and it's a bit troubling to me i actually wrote about it a few months ago, again on Womaner, if you're not familiar again, check it out, W-O-M-E-N-E-U-R. It's a platform for women entrepreneurs. And um, the name of the article that I wrote was Don't Believe the Hype, Create the Hype. And I kind of talked about how, you know, you're in the driver's seat when it comes to creating what this idea is of your own success. It's not hinged upon other people. And so I wanted to just kind of hop on here and also be just very honest about where I'm at in terms of all of this hustling and all this bustling and all of that. So the hustling thing to me, it's a myth. It's a myth. So yes, I'm huge about working hard. You have to work hard. And especially for me as an entrepreneur, it's all on me. I'm a solopreneur. And so I don't have any employees yet. So when bookkeeping has to get done, I've got to do it. When it comes to business development, I've got to do it. I'm still a wife. I'm still a mom of three little kids, like not even big kids. And so they need a lot of my attention. And then, you know, I'm a speaker. So I'm out here speaking. I'm putting in speaker submissions. And you've got the normal flow of business development that comes in where you've got to be doing proposals. So let me give you a reality check on what my life looks like. I am up as early as six o'clock in the morning and I am going to bed as late as 2.30 a.m., literally. 
and I recognize fully and I probably recognize it more this past week that this is not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. Now, some people around social media will have you believe that it is very much sustainable and it's what I'm supposed to be doing. And yes, it is what I'm supposed to be doing because you know the fact of the matter is, is I didn't leave my full-time job to be mediocre. I just didn't. I left my full-time job to be great and I left my full-time job so that I can have more and do more and build this you know, empire, quote unquote. So that's all true. And so in order to get to that point, you have to work, you have to work hard. And sometimes it's gonna require late nights. But I'll tell you what, I had a crazy October and I mean crazy in a good way. Like I just had some phenomenal opportunities and I took advantage of everything. Like there was just nothing that anybody asked me from say March of this year to now that I didn't say no to unless it was just absolutely absurd or they wanted it for free or whatever, but that's an aside. And so finally for weeks and weeks and weeks, I kind of felt like something's coming on, something's brewing like a cold or something was gonna go on. And so really tired and really drawn I felt and Saturday I had to go see a client and I go food shopping and I keep this thing going and I'm going and I'm going and boom, it happens. I get sick, I mean sick. High fever, shakes, all that jazz. And I tell you all of this not because I want you to say, oh Janine, I'm sorry, um, but because I knew it was gonna happen. And really and truly, I've been keeping a ridiculous schedule. It's not a sustainable schedule. It's a schedule that is setting me up for, I don't know, exhaustion, you know, just being tapped out, zonked out, all the rest of it, where I just can't do any of what I love. Absolutely. And so this is where I'm being transparent because I don't want to sit here, burnout, absolutely. And, you know, I'm being transparent because I don't want to sit here and pontificate to you the necessity for sleep, the necessity for you to, you know, just kind of like, um, you know, zonk out and get off of anything that's all digital and have some work-life balance. I want you to understand that it's a struggle. It's a struggle. You have to work at it. Like, this is my revelation is when it comes to work-life balance, you really have to work at it and work at it hard. And it's taken friends and it's taken my own revelations and um you know luckily nothing serious for me to realize it but i in the meantime i hate this messaging everywhere it seems i read a meme yesterday that said you're not a hustler unless you get no sleep yes see that nonsense those damn memes so there's those memes and then it's like Saturday night when I'm just like kind of chilling Netflix and chill with the hubby and the kids. And like, you know, I see somebody pop up on my feed, say on Instagram, and it's like, are you working now? If you're not working now, well, then you're not serious. Really? No, I'm very serious. I'm also serious about my marriage. So, you know, I hate those two. You know, the fact of the matter is, is at some point you've got it, there's got to be a stopping point. And yes, I'm kind of neurotic and I'm crazy about my work and I understand what I have to get done. How much wine can you drink and still hustle properly? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. In fact, I wanted to take a sip of some rum punch that somebody brought back from Trinidad and Tobago for me, but I want to come on here acting crazy. So I don't have an answer for you nor do I think I want to be the guinea pig for that. Christopher playing games up on my periscope. So um, yeah, these memes and all of this messaging is just crazy. And it's not just like, I don't wanna make it out to be like it's social media. It's a cultural norm. It's just a cultural norm in the US in specific. So like, if you know anything about Europe and most other places in the world, but let, let's just take Europe for instance, Europe, they are very, very, it's the stories we tell. Absolutely. Um, Europe is extremely methodical about their downtime. Every day there's a siesta. 
when they take vacation in Europe from work, their vacation or what they call holiday is like a month long. And this is in comparison to the US where we say, oh, you know, we beg for like a week of vacation and that week of vacation in some companies may be frowned upon. Like your boss may be looking at you like you have lost your ever loving mind for asking for a week of vacation or maybe even a vacation day. Like I've been in that position. In fact, I've been sick as a dog. I mean, fever shakes everything and gone into work just to prove to my boss that I was indeed as sick as I was so that they can then turn around and send me back home so that I then can rest. Like that's how crazy it is in the US, ridiculous. So we need siestas here, absolutely. And I know that a lot of people think that, um, you know, these companies, it's longevity, absolutely. Like I said, what I've been doing with these late nights, it was necessary. There's no one else to do my work. I have to do it. But at the same token, you can trust and believe over the next few weeks as I start to ramp down and enjoy the holidays, I'm really going to be thinking about a very different schedule for myself because if I am not well enough to do my work, it just doesn't matter. And I'm responsible for that. And that's why I said it's very important to work at this. But, you know, there one of the stories I heard recently, other than my own and all these other things we have to go on, is Ariana Huffington. So she's like the owner of Huffington Post. And she's been talking a lot for like the past two years about they take vacations all the time and as a country. Yeah, all the time. Like Europe, they've got it made in the shade. And actually, you know, to that point, when you, there's a study, I think it's the center of wellness or something like that. I'll have to think about it again and mention it again. But anyway, I think it's the center of wellness, global wellness that does this whole study every year about like what the country standing is in terms of wellness across the globe and the u.s is like way down on the list like i want to say the u.s was like in the 80s or something like that like we sweden's ahead of us germany's ahead of us like there were some asian com countries that are ahead of us like crazy and this is the u.s the u.s is literally just saying the messaging is this work 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 give us your money we're gonna put it in this social security for you and good luck if you live to see social security good luck if you live to see your ira or any of that stuff you're probably gonna die because you've worked so hard for us like literally this is what it is and you ask if people don't think you can correct and so there's a perception like i know for instance there's probably a perception of me and of many other business owners that if people don't see us on things like social media constantly hustling like if i'm not on periscope every damn day talking about what i'm doing and how i'm hustling hard clearly there's no possible way i could be successful that's the message there's no possible way that janine true could be successful if I'm not on Periscope, on Twitter, on all these things, correct. It's nonsense, it's BS, it's not a fact. It just isn't. Absolutely. I know people that will be working through next week and Christmas and on and on and on and something's gonna suffer eventually. Um, you know, there's been a few people I've known that have ended up in the hospital recently um, because of not sleeping properly. We'll catch on and get balance. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope so. I certainly hope so. But about like Ariana Huffington. So like I said, she's been talking about sleep, sleep, sleep. Like this has been her theme. She's been doing TEDx talks and all kinds of conferences about it. And I didn't realize she was like the sleep expert. And I didn't understand where she was coming from when she was talking about it, but I felt her. I understand, right? She's my sleep idol too. Well, turn here's the story if you don't know like why she's on this trip about sleeping. The reason why she's on this trip about sleeping is because a few years ago, 
she was like with her daughter going to colleges to look for you know a place for her daughter to go to school and I guess she was missing work in the interim and basically she would not work during the day and she would just focus on her daughter and then at night she would just work like through the night crazy hours and she wasn't sleeping well one day she said she just woke up in a like pool of blood and she didn't know why and what happened was she had been up one minute and down the neck she basically passed out from exhaustion and cracked I think she cracked her cheekbone and ended up with like five stitches under her eye bone and crazy and she says that is the point in time when she realized that what she was doing wasn't sustainable and that sleep right I'm like I was like, wow. I mean, she just doesn't even remember the time between when she was actually speaking to somebody and when she actually went down. Um, Tamar Braxton has... Yeah, you have to. Uh, you have to. I've been learning recently to let go of some things. Like there are things I want to do in 2016 with my business and I had to let go of things just to free myself up because at this point I didn't go into business to just be working to a corpse I've got to start thinking about why am I really here I'd like to work and have things somewhat on autopilot maybe maybe I should be having a few days off during the week maybe I don't need to work five days a week and maybe that shouldn't be the goal and so these are things that I'm starting to think about there you go see so this was made you were made to be here but yeah I you know I'm literally for the next few weeks a good friend in fact that's on the scope now has basically been pushing me he's my accountability partner telling me you know you need to just chill like chill your customers will yeah I've got to do it, um, Brian. I have to. I have to because, you know, when you sit back, you've got to say, all right, what did I come from? What I came from was a corporate setting where I was expected to work as much as they wanted me to work. That was a necessity at that point in my life. I left that and now I work for myself. And so, yes, when I started to build a business, I was doing 80 hours. I was working a regular job and I was coming home and I was working for my business to see where the possibilities lie with that. So that was then, and I continued to work and work and work and work, but now I'm going into year three, and I think it seems to me I should really be sitting back and thinking about how do I make this thing really, really work? Like, what do I really want it to look like? And what it really should look like is where I'm not working five days a week. I should be working a certain amount of days per week unless I've got to put in some extra hours and things should be on autopilot and I should have some downtime to explore hobbies and get back to me. I started doing that a bit this year, you know, because I had given up a lot of things like I like to run. I like to run in 5Ks. I like to dance. I like to cook. Um, and so this year I was very methodical about saying, you know what, I'm going to get back to doing 5Ks again. Damn right. Automate them dollars. <laughs> and I'm all over that. Have you heard of Tim Ferriss for our work week? I have. I'm not familiar exactly with the framework. Um, but yes, I've heard about that. And if I can get down to a four work four day work week, that would be great. Because I mean the truth of the matter is, yeah, I'll have to check it out. I'm gonna definitely have to check that out. Um <laughs> where them dollars at, you know that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have to get to a point where this makes sense in my dreams. Like this is my dream. I am my own boss, not anyone else. I have no one to answer to. So, you know, and, and I, there are some things I know about myself now after doing it for a while, like by Thursday, I start to lose steam. So like, you know, Sunday, I'm revving to go, but I'm. It, Sunday's a very quiet day. It's a very, I don't like to see people at my house on Sunday. I just want to be in my skin. It's kind of like football, take care of scheduling things, you know, getting prepared for the week. 
Monday, I'm revved to go. Tuesday, I'm great. Wednesday, I'm great. By Thursday, I'm like, where's my wine bottle? Where's my wine glass? Where's my beer? And where's my couch? I couldn't care less. Um, but I push on, you know, and so Friday's kind of a day where I'm like, I, I don't care to speak to anybody. I may take a few, you know, calls or whatever. Exactly, pregame. So I, I really and truly feel like Monday through Thursday is going to be a thing for me. Um, and, and Fridays, I'm just going to be out of pocket for people because by Thursday, I'm like literally ready to just do me. It's like take off entrepreneur hat. Now it's weekend, Janine. You know, what's going on? What are we doing? So, okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, you know, I share this because I feel like I couldn't be the only person out here that is seeing this messaging and thinking, what in the fresh hell is this nonsense of you got to work, 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 and work. And thank you so much for those hearts. I just want to reset too and just say, this is Janine Truitt. Thank you for watching Ask, for Zar Ask Zarina Live, excuse me. And we're talking about the myth of hustling and what nonsense it is. That's what we're talking about. Um, so yeah, I just feel like I'm sure I'm not the only person that's thinking about this. And I think you kind of got to put yourself in a few different buckets. I think there's some people that literally just sit back and watch and take cues from all these other people. Yeah, the fresh hell. What in the fresh hell? Yes. <laughs> but um, I think there's some people that just sit back and take cues from others. So once other people are saying you've got to hustle and this is what you've got to do to succeed, that's what they're going to do. I think there's some other people that are just in their lane, in their zone, and they're just doing them and, you know, that's something. And then you just got people that just don't know what the hell they're doing and they're just doing any kind of thing. I'd like to think I'm in my own lane and I'm really just trying to focus with great clarity on exactly what it is I want to accomplish. And maybe I'm just not making the best use of my time and I've really just got to get a little bit more methodical about how I'm spending my time so that I can free up that time to do more for me, for my family, whatever that is. Um, and so this is kind of where I was going, like I said, when I said I wrote, wrote that article about don't believe the hype, create the hype. It really is a perception of your success. And I think it's important to understand that your success is not predicated on what the world is doing, what everyone else is doing. That's their success. And it may not even be their success because you know what? Everybody's so copycatish now like everything is oh well what is she doing oh well I should be do that there's just so much of the same like the very very few people out here in their own lane doing something that's like brand new unique and just kind of focusing on that and so I've really come to the realization that success for me is going to be very different from these hustle hard for people and that's okay that's all right I have no problem saying to people that my, um, how I'm measuring success for myself is that, you know, my clients are happy, that my family is happy, that my kids are thriving, you know, because I left corporate America to be with my kids. That was part of the plan. It was kind of like, yes, I'm going to build this business, but I'm also going to have more time with my babies and I'm going to be able to be more hands on and not have to be zipping from here and there to aftercare to daycare and all that kind of nonsense. So I think, I feel like some people are afraid to say that. Right, the turn down, exactly. I feel like people are afraid to say like that somehow the success that they're trying to achieve is not tied to hours spent in the day towards something or towards some sort of dollar figure. Yes, I want to make money. And I intend to make lots of money in my lifetime. That is a plan. But I'm I, there's a quality of life I'm seeking. When people say, oh, I envy you. You get to set your schedule. And your life. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Slap them or choke them. Well, yeah. I mean, because 
there's nothing to envy. You've got to kind of sit with yourself, whether you're a professional working for someone else or you are working for yourself and decide what does success look like for you? And whatever you decide that is, that's okay. That's fine. Like I, one of the other things I've been doing a lot of this year is meditating. Oprah and Deepak have this like phenomenal free meditation thing that they do every couple of months, I would say. I mean, absolutely free. And there's an app and it goes on for 21 days. I'm actually in their latest one right now. And it's all about belief, things we tell ourselves and how to change your beliefs so that you manifest the right things. Oprah, holla. <laughs> That's Shabu. That's Shib that's Shabe before everything else, right? And um, you know, part of those meditations has taught me that, you know, success is not like what we've been taught culturally. It's not this cultural norm of you're successful because you've got millions of dollars in the bank account or you're successful because, you know, your business has been written up by Forbes or entrepreneur or whatever has absolutely nothing to do with that. It has to do with the whole, you know, human conditioning or how you feel about yourself and your contributions in your life, basically. And so for me, when I heard that, it was just like life changing for me because everything you do is basically to go to school, to get a job, to make money, to get a salary that you know, is ever increasing and your expenses end up being ever increasing too. Like, let's be honest about that. So it's just a rat race. And I don't want to be in that race anymore. Like, quite frankly, the end goal for me is to be on an island somewhere with a coconut and a hammock and my husband swinging and watching the waves. That's it. I mean, I am doing what I have to do so that I can get to that point. At some point in life, I just want to lay on a beach, maybe sell some trinkets that I'm good at. But yes, yes. I want to be like in Santorini, like in a little taverna somewhere, just overlooking the Aegean Sea and just watching, just watching that, like, and watching people and drinking ouzo and, and eating great baklava. Like, that's what I want to do. And I suspect most people, if you ask them, like really, really ask them, like, what do you want to do in life? It's not to work. It's not like, oh, nobody's going to say, oh, I want to work really, really hard because like I love working really, really hard. No, that's not it at all. Like people need money to live to, you know, we it's a capitalist society. And so being that that's the case, you, there's not much opportunity for you to do anything else but to work to live. But I've got to, I'm trying to rework this, guys. I'm trying to rework this and I'm trying to figure it out and, and get to a place where I can enjoy this ride called life before God calls me home, whenever that is. Um, because this messaging, this nonsense of hustle, 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 it's crap. It's crap. And a lot of those people that are making those memes are gonna be the first ones to drop. I'm not wishing it, but they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be out there like, yo, I made a mistake. Forget that hustling, like no hustle, hashtag no hustle hard, like hustle less. That's what it's gonna be, yeah. And, um, you know, and at that time, I, I hope to be able to welcome them with open arms over to my side where I'm far more zen. That's what my hope is. And I, I feel like it's a good topic too for now because like here, we're going into the holidays next week. Y'all know what kind of melee is going to ensue next week? Absolutely. Balance is so important for longevity. The melee that's about to ensue in a week. Black Friday is happening and you know that kicks off all kinds of stuff. We are culture. Culture isn't us. The hustle is creating. So write your own story. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. Absolutely, Brian. Absolutely. So, you know, the holidays are coming. Like, this is a prime time where you have to be methodical about your time and just kind of kick back. Like, people are home that haven't been home all year and they want to get together, but you're tired. There's some people that's just not going to see me this holiday season. There's some parties that I'm not going to be at just because I need some downtime. Um, it, I'm just looking to kind of shut it on down 
and enjoy the holidays. I love Christmas. I love Thanksgiving. And so I just want to cook and eat and drink and, and watch, catch up on my being Mary Jane and, you know, those kind of things. Absolutely. It's all about priorities. And I think we have to be more comfortable about being vocal about what those true priorities are because I think a lot of people are putting on appearances for social media to make it seem like their priorities are solely about making money and their boss babes and boss ladies and all the rest of it. Their priorities are probably very, very simple and very mundane, but it just doesn't sound as sexy when you say my priorities are my family and my priorities are sleep and self-care. Just for some people, it's not as sexy, but I wish them luck with that. I'm going to be changing. So you, you guys are going to be my accountability partners and make sure that I'm like on top of this. I really am dedicated to living a far more fulfilled and normal, even keel life. They, yeah, everybody does because everybody's bought into this whole nonsense of, yes, you hustle, you work, you work, you work, you work. I mean, I know quite a few people now that are working like two, three jobs and try to talk to them about the fact that that they're like, I only need, oh yeah. That I've heard and I've also heard people say lately, um, all I need is a nap. I nap, I don't sleep. Right, absolutely. Um, the, the latest one, Lataria, is, oh, I, I just nap. That's all, I just need a nap, I don't sleep, I just take naps. What? No, 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 you need seven to eight, you do. You need seven to eight hours of sleep. I mean, I've been averaging about four hours of sleep each night. It's not working for me. It's it's really not working for me. So yeah, no, you need all eight and they need to be quality. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that when I lay down, I sleep, I do, I just, I'm out. So I don't have any problems in that regard. I just need to get my butt to bed, that's all. A midday nap would be great. I mean, I love, I love the companies that have nap pods. I think it's a great thing. And going back to Ariana Huffington, she's got two nap rooms up there at HuffPost where people, you know, when they're feeling tired, they just go there and they go and they nap. Um, I was at a conference in June and there was a company out of Sweden. I forget their name. I think it was, oh, Metro Naps. And they create these really futuristic, yeah, she, oh, she has no problems with it. Bye. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. So yeah, um, she openly sleeps. She lets her employees sleep. She implores them to sleep. She even said that at first it was hard to get the employees to take naps. Um, but after a while, she just kind of shifted it. And now people take naps all the time. So I implore you to do self-care, take care of yourself, sleep sleep, 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 um, and work smarter, not harder. That's the message I wanted to give tonight. So I'm going to end it here. Um, I will say that next week, there is no Ask Arena Live. I want to run a company that loves their employees like that. Absolutely, absolutely. I intend to be that person. I mean, if all goes well, I will have my first employee by next year. And I... I intend to be that person. So we're going to do it together, Lataria, both of us. I think we're going to be those kind of bosses. So next week, no Ask Sarina Live. This is me taking care of me on Thanksgiving. I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink, and I'm going to chill with my family. That's what's happening. I will be on Periscope here and there. I plan to be on like Monday and Tuesday probably just showing different things going on behind the scenes here, maybe a cooking tutorial, fun stuff, nothing about business. I will be back with Ask Sarina Live the following week. So the week of December 2nd or the, what is that? The week of November 30th. So yes, have a happy, happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for everybody that was on. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Lataria. Thank you, Brian. 
Um, I think I saw Cy Wakeman hop on. Thank you. That's super cool. Super cool. Thank you for the hearts and thank you for sharing. And you can catch any replays of this on Catch and on my YouTube channel, which is the Aristocracy of HR YouTube. I am the Aristocracy of HR.com for my blog. And I am at talentthinkinnovations.com for my company, my movement. Check me out. And again, wishing you a happy, safe, and healthy holiday. Enjoy it. And I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye.